Hello and welcome back to the course of Basic Electrical Engineering. In this video lecture, I am going to continue with the Unit 3, Chapter 3, that is Transformers. The topics that I am going to discuss in this video lectures are Introduction to Transformer, Different Types of Transformer and its Internal Construction. And in the previous video lecture of the Transformer, I have discussed about the different definition related to the electromagnetism, then different kind of magnetic material and hysteresis loop. So let us start with the definition of the transformer. Basically, transformer is a device. It is a static device which is used to step up or step down the voltage. It transfers the power from one circuit to the other circuit. AC transformer. Transformer always works on AC supply. It does not work on DC supply. So it transfers the power from one AC power from one circuit to the other circuit. But it does this operation with the same frequency. That means its input and output is having same frequency. It can raise or lower the voltage in a circuit, but corresponding decrease or increasing the circuit. It basically works on mutual inductance. It consists of two circuits, two coils, and which are linked with the common magnetic flux. So from this, we can uh, conclude that transformer is a static device. It does not have any rotating part. Transformer transfers the electric power from one circuit to the other circuit. It does this operation with the same frequency. And it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Now moving towards the working principle of the transformer. So here you can see one circuit is there which consists of two coils, two inductive coils. And these coils are electrically separated but magnetically coupled through a low reluctance material, through a low reluctance material known as a core. The core is laminated. It is not a single piece. It consists of number of sheets, thin lamination sheet. Steel seeds are used, number of steel seeds are used to design the core. So the core is made up of steel, steel seeds. Now, the coil, coils consist of high mutual inductance. Now, if one coil is connected to the alternating voltage, alternating flux will be produced in that coil. And because of the alternating flux, EMF gets induced in that coil. It is known as a self-induced EMF. Now, these flux will start to flow through the magnetic path that is nothing but the core and flux generated in one coil. Most of the flux generated in one coil gets linked with the other coil. So because of the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, EMF gets induced in the other coil which is known as a mutually induced EMF which is denoted by M is equal to dA by dt. So we are connecting alternating voltage in one circuit, one coil and EMF gets induced in the other coil. Now. If the second coil is connected to some load, if the circuit is connected, circuit is closed over here, then current will start to flow in the second coil. So we can say both coils are not electrically connected, but are magnetically coupled. One coil is connected to the alternating voltage and current is, current is going to be flow in the second coil. So current is transferred. So the energy is transferred from one circuit to the other circuit. And that's why the Name given is a transfer of transformer because it transfers the power from one circuit to the other circuit. The first coil in which energy is fed in which AC supply is given is known as a primary winding. So this is the primary winding and the other coil from which energy is drawn out from which we are taking the output is known as a secondary winding. So basically transformer consists of three parts primary winding, secondary winding and a laminated core. Now, parts of the transformer, as I told you, it consists of three parts, primary winding, secondary winding and laminated core. Bindings are made up of material which is having a low resistance in which flux can be easily set up. The materials used for the windings are generally copper and aluminium. Now, what about the laminated core? So, the, as core, as I told you, core is a, not a single piece, but it is made up of thin lamination sheets. So, here you can see it consists of more number of lamination sheets. In all type of the transformer, core is constructed of sheet steels, lamination. The steel used consists of high silicon content. So eddy current loss is minimized by laminating the core. So each laminations are given insulations. The laminations are insulated from each other by means of some oxidation layer, by means of some light coating. The thickness of the laminations depends on the frequency of the operation. If the frequency is 50 Hz, then thickness of the lamination should be 0.35 mm. If frequency is 25 Hz, then it should be 0.5 mm. 
so basically lamic core is made up of a uh, sheet steels so it consists of number of sheet steels which are insulated from each other by means of some oxidation layer now types of transformer so basically based on the uh, winding how winding is done in the transformer it can be classified into the two types core type transformer and cell type transformer in core type transformer winding surrounds the considerable part of the core so winding is around the core and in shell type transformer the core surround the considerable portion of the winding so in this case core surrounds the winding in the core type winding surrounds the core so this is the basic difference between core type and shell type now so moving towards the first type of transformer that is a core type transformer so as i told you in the core type transformer coil surrounds the core so here you can see one rectangular core laminated core is there and around that coils are placed coils used are of wound type for cylindrical type these vertical portions of the core are known as the limbs or legs of the core and this horizontal pores upper and lower part is known as the yoke of the core now here the windings used are in form of uh, cylindrical type or wound type the general form of these coils may be circular or oval or rectangular then so the small size of core type transformer rectangular core is used and the winding may be cylindrical or in rectangular form you can see here and for large size transformer for high voltage transformer round or circular cylindrical coils are used because circular circular cylindrical coils provides the mechanical strength that's why it is used in most type of core type transformer here in simple form you can see this is a core and this is a primary winding and secondary winding which are placed on opposite limbs or legs these are the limbs of the transformer and this is the yoke of the transformer now low voltage winding here you can see there are the layers of the windings so low voltage windings is placed nearer to the core because it is easy to insulate high winding high voltage winding is placed over the low voltage winding because it is required high voltage winding requires high insulation and high if we provide the high insulation then uh, it ultimately increases the cost of the transformer if high voltage winding is not provide the high voltage uh, high insulation that it will affect it will damage the core that's why low voltage winding is first place then high voltage winding then again low voltage winding then again high voltage windings are place we see that primary winding and secondary windings are placed on the opposite limbs but in actual construction these are always interleaved to reduce the leakage flicks because if primary and secondary are placed on opposite limbs there will be a leakage flux so for to provide uh, to minimize the leakage flux to mini uh, to provide the tight coupling between primary and secondary winding half of the primary winding and half of the secondary windings are placed side by side concentrically on each limbs and not primary on one limb and secondary on the other limb so here you can see half of the primary winding is placed over here and half of the secondary winding is also placed on one limb so both limbs consist of primary and secondary winding and both are co-centric winding now which kind of lamination sheet what is the shape of the lamination sheet sheet to so to provide to design the rectangular shape e and i types of lamination sheets are used or 2l types of lamination sheets are used so here you can say two l types of lamination sheets are used which will uh, using that one core is designed and pri uh, primary and secondary windings are wound on that strips now moving towards the next one is a cell type transformer so as i told you in cell type transformer both windings are on the central limbs so it consists of three limbs here you can see and two yokes it consists of two magnetic circuit in this coil type transformer only one magnetic circuit is there the number of windings are two primary and secondary windings both windings are placed on the central limb and if both winding will be placed over here so we can say winding is surrounded by the core over here some part of the winding is surrounded by the core number of magnetic circuits are double in this case types of material used to design the core is a silicon steel to reduce the hysteresis loss eddy current losses types of winding multi layer dish type of winding are used sandwich type of winding are used over here primary winding then secondary then again primary then secondary now what about the limbs and yoke so it consists of three limbs the uh, windings are placed on the central limb limb is a portion on which winding is placed and yoke is a portion which is used to join the two limbs 
so here you can see e and i shapes are used to design cell type transformer it consists of three limbs and two yokes yoke are basically used to uh, connect the limbs first low voltage winding is placed then high voltage winding is placed place because low voltage winding is required less insulation as compared to the high voltage winding so these are the different differences between cell type transformer and a core type transformer then no shapes used so as i told you e and i shapes are used for interleaving and finally moving towards the comparison of core type transformer and shell type transformer so these are the different parameters on which uh, comparison is done so first one is the definition so uh, as we have discussed in core type transformer winding surrounds the core in shell type core surrounds the winding lamination shape l and c and i type shapes are used here e l e i and l shapes are used copper required it can more copper are required here less copper is required because winding is placed on the central limb winding type core centric winding cylindrical type here sandwich or dish type winding is used limbs here there are two limbs here it consists of three limbs it requires more insulation core type cell transformer and uh, cell type transformer requires less insulation then flux so flux is equally divided distributed on both the limbs of the core here main flux flows in the central limb and in the side limbs half of the flux is flowing primary and secondary windings are placed on side limbs primary and secondary windings are placed on the central limbs it consists of one magnetic circuit it consists of two magnetic circuits because it consists of three limbs it consists the losses are more in core type transformer in cell type transformer losses are less maintenance is easy because both windings are on different limbs here windings are on the central limb so maintenance is difficult then mechanical strength is low because winding considerable part of the winding is uh, exposed to the air here considerable part, parts of the winding is surrounded by the core so it provide it is having a high uh, mechanical strength as compared to the core type transformer so these are the parameter based on core type transformer and shell type transformers are differentiated now moving towards the actual construction of the transformer construction of the transformer with the accessories internal what kind of uh, parts it consist of so this is the one transformer tank which consists of different parts so let us understand the function of each and every parts one by one so it consists of parts like a core windings uh, then the heat exchangers are there bushings are there buckles relay is there one tank is there which is a oil conservator tank and one breather is there so let us understand each and every parts in detail so first one is a magnetic core so here you can say magnetic core is placed in the one tank and core is made up of silicon steel or sheet steel with low reluctance cores are made up of laminations to minimize the eddy current losses and hysteresis losses and these lamination sheets are laminated or coated to minimize the iron losses and hysteresis losses as i told you the next one is a winding so here you can see it consists of two windings primary winding and secondary winding the winding which receives the electric energy is a primary winding and the winding from which electric energy is uh, taken out or which delivers the electric energy to the load is the secondary winding windings are basically made up of materials like uh, copper or aluminum which is having a low resistance windings are electrically isolated but magnetically coupled this tank consists of oil so windings the oil will be medium to isolate uh, to provide the insulations between windings and core next one the material as i told you is a copper or aluminum the next one is a conservator tank it is a air tight tank you can see here it is a air tight tank which consists of oil and the, it is placed at the top of the transformer it is connected to the transformer by pipe now what is the function of the conservator tank the function of the conservator tank is to take the contraction and expansion of the oil which is of the main tank so main tank consists of oil which gets heated when uh, supply is given to the primary primary winding so if oil is heated then it gets expansion if oil is cooled then it gets contraction the function of the conservator tank is to take the contraction and expansion of the oil but all without allowing it to come into the direct contact of the air if oil gets come into the direct contact of the air then it it loses its uh, property 
in very short time. If oil loses its property in short time, then there may be a short circuit in the tank. That's why conservator tank is placed on the top of the tank. The next one is a oil. Basically, it acts as an insulating medium between winding and tank. If oil is not provided, there may be a possibility of short circuit. Now, what is the purpose of the oil? So it protects the tank from the dirt, dirt and moisture. It uh, protects the internal part of the uh, tank from the dirt and moisture, and it basically used for the cooling purpose. When supply is given to the coil, it may get heated. So, uh, purpose of the oil is to provide the cooling in the tank. Next one is a heat exchanger. Now, as I discussed, as I told you that when supply is given, oil gets heated. So, it should be cooled in very short time. So heat exchanger or radiators are provided with the transformer tanks. You, here you can see this is nothing but the heat exchanger or uh, radiator. Basically it is used, it is provided with the transformer to provide the cooling to the transformer by increasing its surface area. Next one is a bushing. So here you can say bushings are placed. So it is basically used for insulating, insulation, insulating purpose it is used. It is used to bring out the terminals of winding from container to the external circuit. If the bushing is not provided, that winding and container gets in direct contact, so there may be a short circuit. So bushing is basically used to provide the insulation and it brings out the terminal from container to the external circuit. So here bushings are at uh, primary winding and secondary winding, both are both sides are there. There are two types of bushing, porcelain type, which is used, basically used up to 33 kilovolt application. And oil field type uh, bushings are also there, which is used in greater than 33 kW application. Next one is a breather. Now here you can say one breather is connected with the oil conservator tank by pipe. Now we know the function of oil conservator tank is to take the expansion and contraction of the oil. Now, if, what is the function of the breather? So it consists of silica gel, which absorbs the moisture content of the air so that oil, contain, oil contamination can be prevented. So breather uh, consists of silica gel, which uh, uh, absorbs the moisture content of the air so that oil can be prevented in the oil conservator tank. The next one is a container. So it is basically a tank which is made up of cast iron or cast steel and it is provided with the radiator. It consists of winding, core and oil. Next one is a Buchholz relay. So here you can see one relay is there between con oil conservator tank and main tank. So it is a basically to provide the tank from internal fold. So it is a gas operated relay. It operates the gases due to any internal force of the transformer. If any internal fold is there in the transformer then oil get burn out and because of the, that gases are produced. So it is a gas actuated relay or gas operated relay. So what is the function of that? It gives the alarm to the operator so that and it can disconnect the transformer from the main supply. So if internal faults occur, then Buchholz relay will be operated and transformer can be disconnected from the main supply so that further damage to the transformer can be prevented. So basically Buchholz relay is used to provide the protection to the transformer under any fold condition. So this is all about the today's video lecture. In this video lecture, I have discussed about the working principle of transformer, core type and shell type of transformer and internal construction of transformer with that part. Hope you have enjoyed the video. See you soon in the next video of the transformer. Thank you for watching.